I make a lot of keyboard content on this channel. But what good is a nice keyboard if you don't have a good screen to look at when you're typing? Hi, I'm the Internet's The Portly Gamer, from the Internet. And thanks to BenQ, boy do I have a nice big screen to look at when typing. But it's not just for typing, it's also for gaming. And that's what it's mainly intended for. Yep, this is what I wrote in the script. This is the Mobius 3210R from BenQ. Their Mobius line is their current series of gaming monitors with three new 165Hz monitors coming very soon. There are two 27 inch variants and this bad boy, which is the 32 inch curved variant, and it's quite impressive. Pre-orders are live as of publishing this video with an expected launch date of October 1st. This monitor was provided by BenQ for review, but as always, my opinion is my own. This video is not paid or sponsored, and the link in the description is not even an affiliate link. The only money I may make from this video is any YouTube ad revenue if you watch the whole video. Please, please watch the whole video. Before we go forward, I should clarify that this channel usually does tech reviews from the perspective of a consumer. I am not the most technical savvy person, especially when it comes to monitors. This is my first monitor review. I don't normally get very technical when it comes to these kinds of things, but we are gonna get at least a little bit technical in this video. The 3210R is a 1440p 165Hz monitor with a 1000R curved screen and a 1 millisecond response time. The display is a 93% P3 color gamut VA panel. It does have a variable refresh rate and is compatible with AMD's FreeSync and though it's not advertised, I use it with Nvidia's G-Sync and it works perfectly fine. This 32 inch model comes in a massive box which which is great for me because now I don't have to go shopping for a new box spring. Inside you'll get the monitor, some instructions, HDMI, display port, and USB-B to USB-A cables. Also included is a tiny remote control and a huge stand to support the monitor. This stand admittedly takes up more room on my desk than I'd like, but I'll give it a pass considering how much I actually like it. It's height adjustable and has a really nice amount of vertical tilt and horizontal swivel. No rotation at all, which is fine because the monitor's too big if you wanted to do like a vertical monitor setup with this thing. It also has a hole to feed cables through to help with cable management. But if you would prefer to mount it, it is compatible with a vase mount. I kind of hate the orange reddish accent in the front of the stand. I would have preferred all silver, but hey. It has two HDMI 2.0 ports and a display Display port, as well as a headphone jack, two USB 3.0 ports, and a USB Type B port. Okay, there are a lot of features packed into this thing, so before we get into the smaller features like the remote and whatnot, let's get into the big stuff the display itself. As I mentioned, this is a 1440p 165Hz monitor, and it is beautiful. It has a 1 millisecond response time and motion blur reduction, all adding up to a very smooth gaming experience with very minimal ghosting. It also has three different HDRI modes, HDRI meaning HDR Intelligence, which is BenQ's own proprietary HDR tech. The display on the 32 inch model goes up to 300 nits of brightness, but if you enable HDR, it actually boosts up to 400 nits. The different HDR modes really do make whatever you're looking at on the screen pop. Cinema HDRI makes greens and teals in particular look extremely vibrant. Game HDRI helps display more details in dark areas. You do of course want to make sure that you have HDR enabled on Windows or on whatever HDR compatible console you might be using this thing on. Of course, a high-end monitor with a high refresh rate and higher resolution are only going to be as good as the hardware you have it connected to. I do want to preface this by saying that I only have a GTX 1060 6GB, which is a little out of date, I'm gonna admit. It is far from the best, but it gets the job done. However, pushing 165Hz at 1440p is a tough task for even higher end graphics cards. 4K60 is gonna be really hard for even like a 3080, maybe a 3090. And from what I've heard, 1440p 165Hz is even more difficult. So I tried out some of the more popular competitive games and I noticed that I had some pretty mixed results that were a little surprising. In 
Overwatch, I did teeter around 165 FPS on medium settings in 1440p, but when the action picked up, it did dip to around 120, maybe even as low as 100 frames per second. In Valorant, I don't think I was able to pull up the frame rate on screen. I remember it did well though, it seemed smooth, it seemed fine, and I did have it at 1440p on medium settings. I do usually use medium settings for these games anyway, just so that everything runs more smoothly, so it's not like a huge deal and the game still looks great. And I know it really isn't a competitive game, but I have been playing a lot of Final Fantasy XIV again lately, and for what it's worth, I did notice that at high settings 1440p, it is able to hit 165 in certain areas, but in other areas or when combat gets a little crazier, it does dip down to around 70 to 100 frames per second. Now Fortnite, which I only played so that I could say in this video that uh, this is a good monitor for Fortnite, I played that and I was actually very surprised at the results. I really don't play Fortnite, so I was expecting a cartoonish, kind of simple looking game to work flawlessly even with my graphics card. You know, the monitor's not to be at fault, but with my 1060, I was surprised at how not great it worked. The frame rate always was above 60, but the resolution... Whew. <laughs> oh boy. In the graphic settings for Fortnite, there is a resolution slider. I had the game set to medium, which had the resolution at about 50%, and I was able to consistently hit around 160 to 165 frames per second. The game just looks very grainy at 50% resolution, almost like you're playing the mobile version, just blown up onto a 32 inch screen. This may not be as noticeable if you're using one of the smaller versions, but on the 32 inch version, it did not look good. However, if I were to bump that up to 100% resolution, it looked a lot better, a lot more clear, and it still got around 75 to 100 frames per second depending on the area and the action. That's all great, that's all still above 60 frames per second, but uh, you know, if you're really looking for those high refresh rates on something like Fortnite, you just want to make sure that your mom or dad buy you the correct graphics card to really push those graphics. And I want to make this clear, this is no fault of the monitor. This has nothing to do with the monitor, so why am I even going into it? Well, that's really because, as I said, this is just from the perspective of an average normal dude who might go out and buy things like you who are watching this video might do. Maybe you're watching this video because you're interested in this monitor. Well, we all live in a world right now where graphics cards are not super easy to come by at retail price. So from the perspective of the normal person who may not be able to grab a high-end graphics card at a reasonable price right now, just know that that's kind of what you can expect. On the Xbox Series S, things do get a little more complicated only because the Series S is not able to put out 120 frames per second at 1440p, at least as far as I've found. It's, it's kind of weird. So as far as I know, you can only do 120 frames per second at 1080p or 1440p resolution at only 60 frames per second. You do not, I repeat, you do not need an HDMI 2.1 monitor or display to run the Series S at 120 frames per second 1080p. That is only needed if you have a Series X and you're trying to do 4K 120 frames per second and even that only works with a select handful of games. Hey, <clears throat> Editor Portly here from the future. Uh, from what I read after filming this, you can use a 2.1, HDMI 2.1 monitor to do 120 frames per second at 1440p on the Series S. Again, only for certain games, but this monitor is not a HDMI 2.1, it just has HDMI 2.0. So I just putting that out there, you know, just so people don't come at me in the comments saying, well, poorly, you're supposed to, you have to, I, whatever, just, it, the point is, this monitor can't do 1440p, 120 hertz on a Series S because of the stupid weird things that make the Series S work or not work in those ways. All right, back to the video. I tested Battlefield 4 and Rogue Company because I looked up a list of confirmed games to run at 120 frames per second on the Series S. Battlefield 4 did admittedly look a little rough at 1080p, it looked a little pixely, and Rogue Company worked fine, it looked good, and it ran really smooth. Ultimately, if it were up to me, as much as I do like the 165 hertz and the 165 frames per second when I can hit that, depending on the game, I would rather have a slightly slower 
frame rate, even if it is above 60, that's fine for me. And I'd rather be able to see the game look better and look more crisp, especially in Fortnite, where if it's too pixely, anything that's far away just looks like a bunch of pixels moving around. You can't, you can't tell what it is. Is it a bad guy? Is he going to shoot me? Or is he a tree? The back of the monitor has a sleek design that does look a little gamery but not too gamery. I, I like it. It has orange LEDs in the back, which you can change the color of. I changed mine to purple. There's also this detachable plastic shield, which you can snap on to cover the wires and kind of help your cable management be a little bit neater. I personally don't use it because I'm never going to see the back of the monitor anyway. I kind of actually used a little lip in the back of the monitor to help hide the HDMI cable that I plug into my MacBook. It's not a feature of the monitor, but it's just a little life hack that I've discovered and it works great for me. Outside of gaming, I have been using this monitor for video editing on my MacBook as well as working from home and it has been wonderful. The higher resolution at 1440p combined with the 32 inch size makes it so that I can fit so much on my screen. Everything is a bit smaller than it would be on a 1080p display. So therefore it kind of condensed and able to fit more into your screen and you really are able to take advantage of the real estate that a 32 inch display will have. And for those nights when I'm up late working on a video, which I probably will be for this one, it does have BenQ's proprietary eye care technology, which does help prevent eye strain, which is especially great on those days where I just can't leave my computer even if I want to. The monitor does have built-in speakers. It is a 2.1 channel powered by Travolo. And honestly, I have been using the built-in speakers as my main speakers since I've set this monitor up. I don't even have my computer speakers on my desk anymore, which I could not be happier about because the less crap on my desk and the less wires to deal with, the better. Typically, monitor speakers are notorious for being bad and just sounding awful. On here, it just kind of sounds like you're watching TV and that is all I need. There are different audio modes you can switch between for different content, just like there are different picture modes. I always just stay on the FPS audio setting. Any other settings I notice when I'm watching anything with voice, like on YouTube and whatnot, it just kind of sounds weird and bassy and muffled. It's not audio file quality sound, but if you are an audio file, you're gonna just keep using whatever it is you already use anyway, so what do you care? Now the remote is amazing. It's probably one of my favorite things about this monitor. And that's not to say anything bad about the monitor, it's just that this remote is super handy. It gives you quick access to changing your inputs, changing video modes, audio modes, adjusting the brightness or volume, and there's even a mute button. I'm gonna be very sad the day I lose this thing. But luckily there are buttons built into the monitor, so even if I do lose this, I just press the buttons on the monitor. There's even like a little control stick that you can use to navigate the menus, kind of like the LG monitors have, if you've ever used one of those. It does have a quick OSD, as BenQ calls it, which allows you to navigate a condensed version of the menu where you can change some of the settings that you may adjust more frequently, but you can just go down to menu and it will give you the full size menu where you can really get in there into the nitty gritty. And that is the Mobius 3210R from BenQ. The coolest monitor that I have ever used, and I'm really not just saying that. It's it's great. I mean, it's 165 hertz, 1440p, and it's huge. It's I love it. Again, this one goes for $699.99, and the two 27-inch models go for $599.99. Pre-orders are live as of this video going up, again with an expected launch date of October 1st. And BenQ was so gracious as to provide me with a 10% off discount code to provide to you guys. Use the link in the description and enter the discount code PORTLYGAMER10 for 10% off at checkout until September 30th. Now as for me, that is the end of this video and the end of our time together today. But it doesn't have to end here because you can support the channel for free by subscribing, liking this video, leaving a comment, and sharing the video with a friend. Maybe you know somebody who is interested in a high-end monitor and this monitor or one of the other smaller variants may interest them quite a bit. All right, I gotta edit this video. I'm running out of time. The day is long, but not that long for me. Uh... All right, I'm out of here. <laughs>